Hi everyone, welcome. Today's video is all about nostalgic and old-fashioned crafting. I'm going to be creating some greeting card bowls. I've seen these before, but I've never made one. And Spellbinders has recently come out with some dies to help you create these greeting card bowls. This is what they look like. There are two different sets. This first one is called Square Base and Sides Bowl. And then the second one is called Hexagon Base and Side Bowl. These were designed by Kathy Holden. I also have some of her beautiful pattern paper. This one is called Home for the Holidays and it is a six inch by nine inch pad of paper. Let me flip through this for you. The pattern paper is a very light weight. I thought it was gonna be a bit thicker, but I'm going to still use this to create my greeting card bowls. You get two of each design. I really like that it's six by nine because you can just get more bang for your buck with this larger size. People used to make these bowls out of recycled Christmas cards. It's so hard to, to get rid of your Christmas cards each year. I know I can't, I keep all of mine. This is a fun way to put them to good use and to see all of the beautiful designs and pictures on the cards. I'm going to pull out my wire snips and cut these dies apart. I like to cut it close to one of the dies. You can, of course, bend them back and forth, but I like to get rid of all the little um, sharp stubs. So the other one, I'm just holding over my garbage can and snipping it really close to the die to get rid of those. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out the patterns that I wanna use for this bowl. And because these pattern papers are so lightweight, I'm going to cut out some of the Spellbinders Essential cardstock colors to glue the pattern paper onto. So we'll need six pieces cut out from this smaller die. And of course, all of the pattern papers in this pad coordinate just beautifully together. I'm just going to use three different patterns. And then I used three different cardstocks. So this first one is terracotta cardstock, and it's a very heavy weight cardstock. It's 100 pound. And I'll use my dot liner to attach these together. It's really easy just to line up the holes. And I'm going to speed this up, but you could use liquid glue if you wanted. I liked to use the dry glue just because this pattern paper is so thin. In the past, people used to make the holes just by piercing the paper or the old cards with their needle or using a paper punch. But I love this because all of the holes are consistent and they're a really great size. I was able to crochet around these holes very easily. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I get to combine my love for paper crafting and my love for crochet for this project today. So here are all of the pieces ready to go. I'm going to put a loop on my crochet hook. This is a really small crochet hook. I've had this in my stash for ages. I'll start at the corner of one of these pieces. And this is some crochet thread. You make doilies with this thread. It's a really thin thread. And I'm going to just single crochet all the way around this paper but I'm going to single crochet three times in each hole. It was a little tricky at first because you don't want to bend the paper at all and I'm not used to crocheting on paper, but once you get the hang of it, it goes really fast. Once I reach the corner piece, I am going to crochet four times in that just to give myself a little extra string to get around the corner. The first corner I only crocheted three times in, but once I have crocheted around this whole piece, I'll crochet one more time in that first hole. This crochet hook is about a size six, but you could go a little bit larger if you wanted to. You could even use a different crochet stitch if you wanted to, like a double crochet, but I just wanted to go really simple my first attempt at this but it looks really lacy and pretty. Let me give you a close-up look at that. 
And of course, for the single crochet, you just go in the hole, grab up a loop, pull it through, wrap your yarn around the hook, and pull that through the two loops already on your hook. There are a lot of crochet tutorials on YouTube if you're interested in learning the different stitches. I've been crocheting since I was eight. I find it really relaxing and it's really fun to read a pattern and put these different projects together. It's almost like puzzle solving in a way. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of patterns and projects that are super simple and it's fun just to keep your hands occupied while you're watching a show or waiting for the oil in your car to be changed. So once I finish crocheting three times in this last hole, I'll crochet one more time in the first hole. So that'll make four crochets in that hole. And then I'm going to slip stitch to the first chain. I'll cut my yarn off, and then I can just pull the end through this loop, and that'll make a nice little knot so your work won't come undone. And I apologize for going off camera here, but I'm just pulling the end through my loop. And then I can go ahead and weave in all of the ends using a darning needle. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest off camera, but isn't that just pretty and dainty? And once I've crocheted around all of these pieces, I'll show you how I'm going to put these together. And there are many ways to do this. There's no one right way. But to attach them to the hexagon base, I'm going to crochet them together. You could stitch them together just using a darning needle if you'd like. But I'm going to go all the way around the hexagon base, just using the, a single crochet stitch. I'm lining up the holes. So I'll go through both of the stitches, grab up a loop, wrap my hook around the yarn and pull up another loop, and then pull that loop through the two stitches on my hook. So again, I'm going into each and every stitch. And this goes a lot faster than it seems. And here is the first panel all connected. I'm going to keep my yarn attached and just start crocheting into the next panel. I'll again line up the stitches and I'm just going across the bottom. I'll do this with all of the panels. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can get away with a lot on crocheting around these. Okay, so here it is all done along the bottom of this bowl. And then for the sides, I'm just going to bring in my darning needle and the same yarn and just stitch back and forth between the two panels. I'll tie a knot at the bottom to hold the yarn in place so that it doesn't come out. And like I said, there's multiple ways of doing this, but I'm just showing you how I did this with my bowl. I'll weave in all of these ends once I'm done. But I'm just kind of pinching the two edges together. And just very quickly and easily going back and forth between these two edges. And I'm not going in the holes. I'm sorry I'm off camera here. I didn't realize it at the time. But I'm just going back and forth in the yarn. I'm going to tie another knot up at the top of this and then I can just cut my string and start on another edge. I'll show you how that bowl turned out in just a moment but I wanted to get started on my second bowl. This one is going to be a lot simpler. I'm going to be doing a bit of cross stitching. 
I cut out my panels with some brushed gold cardstock and I used the embossing folder of the month called Scattered Fall. This gives my panels some beautiful texture. So let me show you how I sewed these together. This time I'm using embroidery floss. There are six strands to this floss. I cut a length of it and I folded it in half. And then I'm just putting my darning needle on the edge that does not have the loop. And the other end has the loop, as you see here. This is an easy way to attach the embroidery floss to your piece. So I'm going to actually pull this one all the way through. I'm going to go through the front, so front to back. And then I can hold up the second panel, just right next to it. I'm going to push the needle through the second to the top hole. This will create a little slant. So this will be half of the X. And then I can go through the loop on the first panel, and this just attaches it really nicely <laughs> to my piece. And then I'll go through that same hole to pull it to the back. Then I'm just going to continue down doing half of my X's. I'll do these slash marks all the way down the side of this. So we'll go into the second hole on the first panel and into the third hole on the second panel. I hope I'm explaining this okay. And then I'm just going to continue on down. You can do a blanket stitch on these or even a lacing stitch. It would be really pretty. And this is really fun and relaxing to do. So once I get to the bottom of these two panels, then I can start creating the other half of the X and I'm going to go up, back up the panel. So let's go into our last hole at the bottom of the first panel. And then we'll go up to the next hole on the second panel. And then there's our completed X. Okay, and here's the first two panels all done. I'm going to continue on by doing a lacing stitch at the top of this box. So I'm just going in the front and then looping it around and go in the next hole from the front again. I'll do this all the way across the top edge. And then I have enough thread that I can continue on with my cross stitching down the next side. So I'll hold up my third panel and just continue my cross stitching down the side of this piece. So it's super easy and super fun to do. I really had a lot of fun with these dies.
And here is the box all done. On the bottom, I did the same cross stitching to attach that. Look how pretty the red and the gold look together. And you can make so many different versions of these greeting card bowls, or boxes in that case. Here's the first one all done, and it's a good size. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to put inside this in just a moment. <laughs> but I love all of the beautiful pattern paper on the outside, and then the three different card stocks on the inside. So these will make great gifts. So when I have little bowls or boxes, what I think or what comes into my mind is chocolate. <laughs> so I went to the grocery store and found some Halloween candy. They don't have their Christmas candy out yet. Thank goodness. I'm not ready for that yet. But this Halloween candy will do just fine. And you can put a lot of candy in this cute little bowl. I'm planning on making up a few of these as Christmas gifts this year. Okay, and here is the second bowl. And I found even more cute chocolates to add to this little one. But just look at that embossed texture. It is so much fun. So again, I have Halloween chocolates. I found some Dove chocolate, which I adore. <laughs> And again, it doesn't have to be chocolates. There's so many fun things you can put in these little containers. So I hope you enjoyed this different kind of video from what I usually create on my YouTube channel. I'll have all of the links listed in the description box if you're interested in checking out these really fabulous dies. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful crafty day. Bye.